Hi, everyone. Thanks for braving the weather today. I know it's not ideal outside, but we'll keep cozy in here. My name is Melissa Minko, and I am the Director of Retail Strategy at Digital Consultancy CINT. We specialize in composable commerce solutions and integrations. And joining me today, I have Mark Messing, the VP of Digital Experience and Loyalty at Domino's. We did not bring any pizza for you today. I just want to get the elephant out of the room right now. We are sorry about that, but we do really appreciate you being here today. So every year we publish our connected retail report and half of that report is dedicated to the findings from our consumer insights survey. And then half of that report is dedicated to our retailer audit. This year for the Consumer Insights Survey, we surveyed 1,012 US consumers across all generations, genders, and races to find out how their shopping patterns, behaviors, perspectives have changed over the last year. And what we found was that consumers are on a mission. Um, there was also a QR code on the previous slide to download the report. It's downloadable at our website too, and we will have the QR code again at the very end of the presentation. Um, but yeah, so basically what we've found is that today's consumer is on the ultimate mission. They know exactly what they're looking for, what price they want to pay for it, where they want to go for it. They, they know. Um, they're extremely well-researched, well-informed, and the reason behind this is because they are feeling the weight of the inflationary pressures of the past two-ish years. Um, so in this year's report, we asked a lot of questions around the economic outlook and the impact of it on consumers. And what we saw was that 80% of respondents in our survey felt that the economy has slightly or significantly changed their shopping habits or behaviors. 70% of that 80% resonated with the statement, I am trying to spend less overall because of inflation, focusing primarily on the lowest cost items. So you can see that this, the last two years have really weighed on consumers and their spending habits and their shopping behaviors are really reflecting that. While price is a primary driver in the shopping mission, so is convenience. So we offered up a list of reasons why a consumer wouldn't shop at a physical store, and similarly why they might not shop at an online store. The number one reason had to do with price for both the brick and mortar format and for the online format. And the second most common reason pertained to convenience. So for a physical store, what was often deterring them had to do with the location of the store, and for an online store, it had to do with if the website was hard to navigate. We also asked what would be the reasons why you might download a retailer's app, because we know that's kind of a tricky subject today. And the top reason also had to do with price. And then the third reason also had to do with convenience, saying that they shop the retailer so much, it's just more convenient at that point to be using an app. We asked a lot of channel decision questions in the survey, um, but I don't have all of those in the presentation because you would be here for like two hours. Um, but other questions we did also ask had to do with loyalty. And what we saw was that the third criteria for how consumers are making purchase decisions today has to do with quality. And quality really rises to the top when it's about repeat purchase decisions, with 64% of consumers saying the quality of the products would be the reason they're more loyal to a brand, and 57% of consumers saying the quality of the products would be the reason they're more loyal to a retailer. So consumers are kind of triangulating all their research and making sure that they're focused on quality, price, and convenience when making decisions. And this applies to the retail space as a whole, and certainly to the pizza space as well, as Mark is going to share um, with his data. And what does this all kind of ladder up into? The common theme is a desire for clarity and for efficiency. So it goes back to that kind of mission-oriented mindset that consumers today have. Um, so this year, we asked a pretty interesting question around a preference for a website, whether they prefer a website that's fun to look at and browse, or a website that's kind of straight to the point in helping them find what they're looking for quickly. And the majority of our respondents said they prefer websites that are strictly to the point and just help them on their mission as quickly as possible. We also asked a lot of search-related questions, and I, I wanted to show one of those questions here today, and that was posing the statement, I choose which online retailers to shop at based on the quality of their search results. And you can see a, a whopping 68% said that was true. 
So there's also really high expectations on the search experience. And that just further solidifies the fact that consumers know what they want and they expect retailers to help them find it right away. Um, they even told us they expect retailers to understand their most complicated search queries, um, which I think is a little high maintenance considering what some of my friends search for, but this is how consumers feel today. So there is also kind of a channel perspective on this and smartphones are really the gateway or the preferred platform for accomplishing that mission. Um, so we asked consumers which platform was their preferred between the smartphone, the laptop or the desktop and shopping in physical stores. And the smartphone kind of slightly edged out the physical stores, just showing you that they really want to be mobile. And I know over this last holiday season, we all kind of saw that reflected in the data. Um, but there is a big gap here, and I think this is really interesting. So even though consumers are preferring to use their smartphones, they're not engaging with that many retailer apps. The majority of respondents in our survey told us that they're only engaging with an average of one to three retailer apps. So there's a big opportunity to elevate the quality of the apps that exist today, or to create some new ones that are doing some innovative things. And Domino's has seen a lot of success with its app, so Mark is going to be speaking to what a best practice app can really look like, and hopefully you all can kind of apply that to your retail scenarios. So the last section of data I wanted to share is kind of just so I don't get kicked out of the conference, because I know <laughs> every session has been on AI at this point um, to some degree, and I know it wasn't in the title. We kind of bait and switched you a little bit, but. Um, there were some important stats that I think serve as a really good reality check just because it's all the talk right now. So the first one is that consumers were exactly 50-50 split in our survey in telling us that retailers should use AI to improve the shopping experience. So there is definitely a healthy dose of skepticism that consumers are experiencing today around AI, which is really important to keep in mind as retailers continue to talk about it and raise awareness to consumers that it's something that they're using. The second stat that I wanted to share was around their understanding of generative AI. So this is an important reality check because for us at this conference, generative AI is something that I think we're all kind of like even dreaming about at this point. It's so lodged in our psyches, but for consumers, not all of them understand what generative AI even is. And of those consumers who do understand what it is, they do have a lot of concerns about it. The primary concern for the consumers in our survey was around privacy and personal information. I'm sure that's no surprise, but the second most common reason or concern that they had over AI actually pertained to the quality of search results. And they told us that they were worried that generative AI would compromise the quality of the search results that they were going to receive. So I thought that was interesting because a lot of the use cases for generative AI right now pertain to search results. So it's important to note that even though it's meant to elevate that experience, consumers don't necessarily trust that it will. I think it'd be very cool to see some retailers kind of do a before and after on their website to show consumers, here's what your search results would look like if we didn't use generative AI, and here's what it would look like if we did, so that they can sort of understand the value in it. Um, there's a lot of communication and transparency that really needs to happen with this before consumers are on the same page of, uh, you know, where all of us retailers are. Um, so I'm going to pass the baton now to Mark to talk about all the fun things that Domino's is doing. We are a very proud partner of Domino's. We've been working on their e-commerce redesign. So honored to have you on stage with me today. And I'll give you this uh, baton. We'll see how it works. Thanks, Melissa. Um, Domino's is a pizza company, right? And when I think about the data that you were sharing, a lot, a lot comes down in our world to value, convenience, delicious food, right? That's what a pizza company focuses on. When I was a kid and my sister would babysit, that meant it would be a pizza night, right? And pizza night is a special night, right? Pizza has this almost magical way of making even mundane events special or emphasizing the specialness of special events, right? And Domino's was the pizza company bringing that magic into my life because of their focus on delicious food at a really good value, which my family needed, that could be fit into a busy schedule, which my family needed, so convenience, right? Somewhere along the way for Domino's. Uh, it's a little tricky, there you go. Technology became a part of the magic, right? 
Self-driving delivery is something that we've tested. Um, you can order from Apple CarPlay. And having run some of the self-driving delivery testing, it's amazing to see people's face light up as that technology enters their life in a really relatable way. And these types of things have sort of created a narrative that Domino's is a technology company. So how can that be? How can a pizza company become a technology company? How can a company be a pizza company and a technology company? Well, I think it starts at Domino's with the fact that the tech success, the technologies that we've, we've, we've deployed successfully have really driven our broader business. Um, $7.5 billion of U.S. digital sales for Domino's domestic, 85% of our U.S. digital sales mix, uh, or of our U.S. sales mix is digital, right? So digital is driving the business. And how did that start, right? It started with a history of being revolutionary, right? It started with our website and our app, which at the time, when we launched it, was very early to market compared to other restaurants. And when we launched it, we launched it with the Domino's Tracker, right? The Domino's Tracker, if, if you're somehow not familiar, gives you more control over that pizza delivery, right? When you're having your magical pizza night and waiting for that special moment, doesn't every minute feel like an hour, right? When you don't know what's going on. So the Domino's Tracker really gave customers the control over that moment to know what was going on to lessen the feeling of that wait, right? That was revolutionary. We took that mentality and took it even further, right? It wasn't just about website and apps. At Domino's, we strive to bring our ordering platforms to wherever you might want to order from. So we launched a platform of Anywhere channels um, and uh, focused on things like text ordering, ordering from SmartWatch, ordering from Apple CarPlay, being there where the customers wanted us to be, putting control in the hands of the customer with revolutionary technology. But really, as soon as you do that, what happens is you have a choice to make of balancing revolutionary ev innovation with evolution of your existing platforms that you just launched, right? So in the Domino's world, this is the decision of, are we going to launch something like mind ordering, where you can order with your mind <laughs> in partnership with uh, Netflix, we, we launched uh, a tool uh, where you could, it, it leveraged uh, facial recognition technology, and you could order a pizza with gestures of your head, gestures of your face. You could navigate through a game with that experience and order a pizza that came to your house, right? Were we going to be revolutionary to add to the magic, or were we going to evolve our existing programs? Something like GPS tracking is a really good example of that. If Pizza Tracker is a part of the foundation of who we are as a company, it was a must for us to add GPS tracking to give users even more control over that moment of waiting, right, in the platform. And recently, we've had a lot of uh, w uh, big developments in that evolutionary space. We're always going to focus on being a certain amount of revolutionary, a certain amount of disruptive, right, getting first mover advantage where we can. But it's equally important and not talked about enough evolving your current platforms. Pinpoint delivery is a really good example of this. It almost sits in both camps, right? This is where we were first in our, in our industry to allow users to get pizza delivered to wherever they were. If they were at a beach, if they were at a park, they could easily get pizza delivered to them. And the technology made it easy for them to get it delivered there and allowed users to easily find the driver at the drop-off point and navigate that drop-off point, right? So this took delivery to another level with pinpoint, Domino's pinpoint delivery. Another really good example is Domino's Rewards. Domino's Rewards is a really important part of our business, and evolving that program was really important. Um, we recently relaunched Domino's Rewards. It used to be called Piece of the Pie Rewards. So we changed the name to Domino's Rewards, and we made some really important changes for the customer, right? 
We made it so that they could earn faster, where they could get 10 points uh, for five orders of $5 or more instead of orders of $10 or more. We gave them more choices. So they, they had choices, a variety of choices at 20 point, 40 point, and 60 point levels. And importantly, we set up the platforms to give them even more rewards beyond that so they could start getting targeted and personalized offers through our e-commerce platforms. Um, and so this evolution was, is one of the biggest drivers of our business, right? And as I mentioned, we're always going to focus on doing things that are innovative and first mover. But a lot of our focus continues to be on that evolution path. We're going to continue uh, evolving our existing platforms. And really, I think it comes back to where the conversation started. It comes back to thinking of things in terms of, I don't want to develop technology for technology's sake. I want to think about what matters to my customer and win in the technology arms race at providing those things to my customer, right? I want to win at providing them the most value possible through my technology because the pizza night is the special thing. And that's the thing we want to give them, right? I want to win at giving them convenience and I want to win at giving them deliciousness, right? So this is, you know, just an overall summary of, you know, where our focus is at Domino's um, and, and what uh, we're, we're doing in terms of balancing uh, revolutionary technology and evolving our current, our current platforms. Um, so that, Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, my favorite place is the beach to order pizza too, so I appreciate <laughs> that you do that. Um, so now we'll get into some of the Q&A. So um, you've talked about a lot of innovation. Domino's has always kind of been at the forefront of innovation. What key decisions have powered that? Yeah, it's hard to zoom in on any one decision. Um, consumer research informs everything that we do at, at Domino's. Our customer data informs everything that we do. I would say we pair that with um, the insider of our franchisees. Our franchisees are really familiar with their business. They know the customer tension points. They know uh, the opportunities. Um, and so it's really a collaborative effort with them where we establish opportunity areas to go after. And then we work with our agency uh, work in progress to bring us ideas uh, on that. And it's an uh, effort of, of uh, prioriza prioritization from, from there. That's so. great. I think that emphasis on consumer insights is what makes you so successful. Yes. Because so many brands forget to do that and just kind of drive innovation for innovation's sake. But there's no real need for it. Necessarily. It's, we're, we're, we're disciplined about it in terms of making sure we have the consumer insights to drive what we're doing and vetting the things that, the ideas we have to make sure they're important to the, to the consumer and solving something for, for the customer. 100%. Um, so you said that you recently changed the loyalty program to Domino's Rewards. Why did this change happen now? Yeah, so I've been on the rewards program for, for years. I've been involved with it off and on for years. Um, we launched uh, our loyalty program. It was Piece of the Pie Rewards. We launched that in 2015. A very different time then from a loyalty perspective, especially in restaurants. We were relatively early. Uh, there was a primary competitor that had a loyalty program, but we were relatively early in food. And we saw you know, pretty quickly it driving profitability for our business, driving incremental sales for our business. And that continued for, for, for years. Um, really, when we launched it, we consistently monitored consumer sentiment tied to the program, along with monitoring that profitability. Mm -hmm. And we monitored industry trends um, to understand what uh, uh, restaurants were doing in the space. And you know, through that process, it was really uncovered that we had two major gaps that we could address to make our program a lot more um, enjoyable for customers. Um, the first gap was variety. I think that speaks for itself. In 2015, actually, when we first launched, there wasn't a lot of interest in non-pizza items. The, non the pizza items. It was the really core thing that motivated people. But the world had changed, right? Rewards programs had um, uh, given a lot of, of variety, and so we needed to address that. The other big thing was attainability. So you know, you needed to order six times to get a reward in our last program. We reduced that down to two, two hmm. times so you could get a reward for every two orders. So that was really important for us uh, as, as well to do. Um, uh, another area of attainability was lowering that threshold down from 10 to 5 because on carry out that there was a, a good chunk of our customers not earning points at that, at that threshold. Got it. No, that makes a lot of sense. And that's great, especially with how spendthrift people are today. They want that lower threshold for receiving yep. the rewards. 
Great. Um, so let's talk about the app now. Um, I mentioned that it is a big sales driver for you guys. You have a very loyal customer base and they really love to use it. What aspects have been crucial to continued customer use of that? Yeah, I think there's, there's a lot there. I guess the thing that I would point out is app specific features, mm -hmm. right? And so for us, that really started with Points for Pies. Uh, points for Pies was a feature that we released where you could scan any pizza from everywhere and get points for our loyalty program in it. So you could scan Domino's pizza, you could scan frozen pizza, you could scan our competitor's pizza and get points. Um, and uh, we put that in the app and that was the only place you could get it at, at the time. Um, we sort of continued that with Pinpoint Delivery. Pinpoint um, is an app only feature, it really leverages the geolocation technology of the app to, to provide a really seamless experience there. Um, and I would say, you know, just balancing that with really um, fundamental um, tech, I think the, we, a, a piece of the rewards launch, we launched a, f a feature of our site called My Deals and Rewards. And that really stands up in our app as a core place where people can go to get personalized targeted offers mm -hmm. to them. And so that's a big, big driver of, of uh, performance for us uh, as well. Yeah, I think the geolocation technology is so innovative and we've heard of brands trying it kind of in the early 2010s and then a lot of them shied away from it because they couldn't perfect it. So it's great to see that you guys have really figured it out better than anybody. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, so let's pivot to the site then. Um, same question, what elements of the site have been most pivotal for the user? Yeah, I would uh, focus in on the mobile site actually. Um, for us, the mobile the mobile site is almost you know is is important. It's it's rivals the app, and um, I think with the mobile site, it's about keeping it simple, mm -hmm. um, decluttering as much as possible, um, not not you know overloading people with choice, um, taking tasks and chunking them out in in a specific way to pace people through it and really guiding them through it with clear CTAs um, has been has been um, really really important. Um, and so it's, it's about simplicity and, and guiding the user through it on the mobile website, I would say. And that speaks back to all the convenience research too, and the fact that you guys are a tech company more than anything else. And that's a trend that we've started to see in the retail space overall is more and more retailers considering themselves tech companies, but it's definitely where retailers need to be thinking nowadays versus just that they're selling products, like they're selling a service too. Yeah, and I, I would say like there's certain things with the mobile experience where it, makes total sense to streamline it like no one's going to like doing it so selecting your location process going through the payment process like doing everything you can to streamline it makes sense there are other things where for us there's a core group of consumers that want to explore want to be able to customize so things like building a pizza things like searching for deals there's a certain amount of control that users still want there right and so like an example is on our deals page on our website um when you go to sort of browse the deals, you're shown all of the deals, but then it filters down and grays out the deals that don't apply to the things that are in your cart. Well, why not just remove the things that aren't in your cart? It's because, you know, users still want the control of being able to browse the full breadth of things as they're building the order, right? So that's just like a tactical example of trying to balance that need to streamline ordering and make it frictionless while giving users the control they want to take the task on at hand. That's especially interesting because in our personalization research back in April, we found that consumers don't want a pre-filtered website. They want to do the filtering themselves because yeah. they don't want to miss out on anything. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Like I think, I think people just really jump on this. It needs to be as fast as possible. It needs to be as fast as possible because that's where so much of the gain is. Like certain friction points, if you really zoom in on that, that makes sense. Yeah. But if you make that your mantra, right. you can really lose out, you yeah. know? Yeah. And they don't get to discover different combinations and stuff like that. Right. That's, yeah. Right. Nobody really wins in that way. Right. Um, so what has heightened price sensitivity in this economic environment meant for the user experience beyond like the loyalty shifts? Yeah. An interesting thing for Domino's is like coupons are a part of the product. They've been a part of the product from day one. A piece of our ordering experience is getting people through that coupon process. And, and that's, that's really been around since coupons have been, you know, on refrigerator doors stuck with a magnet. Um, in, I would say that heightened price sensitivity has changed the, the, our industry in particular. It's always been a little bit of a value war. Mm -hmm. That war is coming to life in a different way now through rewards and personalization, you know, in, in, in the industry. And so um, the companies that are winning are really winning with, in, 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 that, in that space. An example of Domino's like winning there is emergency pizza. So emergency pizza is a campaign we have going right now 
um, and it, it's a free pizza that you get when you order from Domino's. Well, you know, that's really us saying, okay, when we launch rewards, if we just go and say Domino's Rewards has a new program, no one's gonna, no one's gonna hear that, no one's gonna know what that means to them. If we say, hey, get a free pizza if you join rewards, people are gonna hear that, but it's not gonna stand out and be associated with Domino's, so there's not as much long-term gain to that. If you position that as an emergency pizza it, that you get in a moment of need, if you, if you burn your dinner or if you drop your groceries or if you're just in that moment of need to, that you need to, to sort of have pizza save the day, um, then it becomes ownable to Domino's and it puts it in context of you know, the, the, the way that the user will see value in it, right? And so that's a good example of us taking value to the next, to the next level. Yeah, there's a lot of strong brand identity present in all of your answers too. Like Domino's right. is a friend to a right. lot of consumers, it seems like, like if you're in a pinch, helping out in that way. It's really true. I mean, we have a very strong partnership with our brand team with everything that we do. There's a really good balance of, you know, brand and innovation um, with, with everything that we do, for yeah. sure. And that also kind of puts the technology in an even more positive light for the consumer too, which right. is great. Right. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, so you were mentioning these personalized rewards. Um, what are some examples of kind of those bundles and how does that personalization work on the technology side? Yeah, I would say we're on a journey. We're getting better at it every day at Domino's. Um, you know, we have a lot of data to activate on. A uh, good example is, you know, just with that emergency pizza campaign, a little bit of a journey set up there was for users that redeemed emergency pizzas, it was a one-time per campaign structure. We wanted to make sure they were engaged with the campaign um, even after that emergency pizza was sort of claimed. And so we set up a journey of additional rewards that they were getting in their My Deals and Rewards section, including you know free tots. So it's sort of creating a, a, a journey there uh, for that campaign in particular. Um, another good example is extreme delivery recovery where we you know proactively reach out if users have uh, uh, poor delivery service times and uh, account for that uh, uh, by, by giving them make goods, so. That's yeah. great. And even that two minute, um, if it was longer than two minutes for pickup at one time, then you would get a coupon. I loved that and I thought that was a great retail best practice for yeah. kind of omni-channel flexible fulfillment too. Yeah, it's really for sure. Smart. Yeah. Um, so you talked about delicious food as well. What changes are you making to showcase the delicious food and can you say more about that? Yeah, so, you know, like I, I, why is pizza night so special? It's because it's, it's delicious, right? It's delicious food. And Domino's has really delicious food. Like we hand toss our dough. We put a lot of work into hand tossing our dough. We have fresh ingredients. Um, and, and it's a really good value in terms of the quality of food you get. We're really striving to, you know, make the food, you know, if you were to close your eyes and imagine the most delicious pizza you've had, um, we're striving to sort of bring that visual onto our sites um, through imagery and photography. Um, that really started with the Domino's Rewards program when we upgraded that section of our e-commerce platforms. We upgraded the food photography throughout that section. Um, it's gonna really continue with our e-commerce redesign. It'll be a key focus, but it's really interesting the data you showed about the desire for, um, what was it like? Well, the quality one, but the the desire for uh, streamlining the order or function versus yeah, oh, um, like straight to the point versus browsing. The yeah, site. like straight to the point versus browsing the site. Yeah. People want things that are a little more straight to the point. So it's like, how do you romance the photography where it matters, where you're not yeah. getting in the way of them doing the task that they need to do? Totally. is the really key challenge for us, and and um, you know we're we're gonna sort of keep getting better at that every day. Yeah, and one thing that surprised me when we were preparing for this was you said people do get pretty experimental with their orders. They tend not yeah. to order the same thing every time, yep. which I was surprised by because I feel like this is such a habitual thing to some point. I mean, it's a comfort food. It's something people look forward to in that respect. Um, yeah, what have you found there with people kind of exploring different flavor combinations and stuff? Yeah, I think. Um, it's true that the, there's a good blend there, I guess I would say. There's a core group of customers that are ordering, you know, the, the same type of order. And there's a core group of customers who, you know, adding, adding jalapenos is sort of how I'm spicing up my week this week, right? <laughs> and, you know, it's raining, it's snowing, you know, um, and, and so that's how I'm making it special. So that's, that's what I would say there. I think we always work to blend... Um, the ability for people to customize with the ability for, for to streamline, mm -hmm. um, you know, with, with what we're with what we're doing. Yeah, that's very cool. 
Um, and that kind of answers this question, but wondering if you can elaborate a little bit on how do you balance engagement focused features with that mission oriented mindset? Yeah, for sure. I, I think it's just a, a balance of, you know, figuring out where you can streamline versus where you're going to give people the ability to customize. Mm -hmm. um, so a few examples, like you can, as you build your mix and match coupon, you can select recently uh, ordered items. Um, uh, but you can also build custom items and, and pizzas. And we really focus on getting that custom pizza builder right within that uh, pizza building experience. We weave in like smart, smart upsells. So things that like, uh, if you're ordering a certain specialty pizza, recommend a topping that pairs really well mm -hmm. with, that, with that pizza. So that helps streamline it in a way where you're still giving users, um, you're still giving users choice. Um, and, you know, I, I think maintaining features that are really important uh, for customization is a really important part of that too. So like half and half pizzas, right? If I have a family of four and my kids want uh, uh, cheese and I want, I want pepperoni and ham, you know, that ability to be able to take one pizza and have half of it be cheese and half of it be pepperoni and ham is really important um, for like upping the value, right? Because now I don't need to order two pizzas um, to provide that what I need to provide to my family to meet everyone's needs. So um, those are just some examples I would give of sort of blending that convenience versus customization. For sure. And I like how you've made a point to talk about empowering the customer and really keeping them feeling like they're in control. Yeah. I think that's a really big concern for today's consumer is, am I making these decisions or is the brand making them for me? Yeah. I would say like not even making them feel like they're in control, like giving them the control. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, I think, um, you, again, you just have to blend that with, you know, for, for all the discussion about AI and all the value that AI can bring, it's, it's, it's really important to recognize that that's not necessarily experience everybody wants all the time. There are times where users really want to be able to choose things specifically themselves. And how do you, how do you create that balance and maintain those two, two things is really important. For sure. So that's actually a perfect segue. Um, what role does and will AI play in Domino's digital strategy? Yeah, I would, um, I spoke to personalization. I think AI is going to be foundational for what we do with personalization. I think what um, is, the right, is the right deal for you, is the right product for you, is different than what's the right deal for me. Mm -hmm. If I have, you know, two young kids and you have two teenagers, that's a different order, that's a different deal that you're going to want. If you have no kids, if you, you know, if you're ordering for a football game versus something else. And so for us, like, solving that occasion the right way and solving the customers, what the customers are looking for the right way becomes, you know, an exercise in how do we use AI to create personalized experiences for, th for things like our deals and things like our, our products and, and put the content in front of you that matters to you. And, you know, the way we bring that to life at Domino's is going to be a blend of machine learning technologies uh, you know, leveraging various data to, to cr just create a more dynamic, personalized experience for, for our customers. For sure. I didn't include this in the slides because, again, we have a lot of AI data, but um, something we also saw was that consumers do want to see improved product descriptions, and they also want to see more of a variety of the products being showcased on different potential consumers. Um, and then they also want to be told if their product is able to arrive to them faster we didn't tell them that those are all things that can be achieved with AI. We just kind of told them which improvements would you like to see from retailers, and those were their top three in the list. Um, so, you know, along with the personalization, there's also a lot of merchandising implications that I know have been talked about throughout the conference, but I'm sure there's opportunities. What was the there. middle one? Um, the middle one was seeing the product on a variety of consumers. So if it was like apparel, seeing a lot okay. of different, yeah. I like putting it in it, pizza wasn't making sense. <laughs> right? I mean, maybe it's like, yeah, a bunch of different flavor combinations yeah. or right. something like maybe someone with allergies. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I just, if, I just can't think pizza, I guess. I'm yeah. yeah. No, it's one track mind. It's great. Um, yeah. I also really like that you guys had so much success with a facial recognition um, kind of service, just because I yeah. think a lot of retailers struggle with that technology yeah. and the application of it. But because you tied it in with the Netflix partnership and it was right. fun, when consumers see that there's a reason for the buy-in, they really enjoy that type of an opportunity. It's very hard to kind of 
you know, overcome those hurdles if they don't understand the benefit of something like facial recognition tech. So yeah, for sure. I think I think where we use disruptive technology, the question on our minds is like, how can we make this matter to the consumer, um, either through sort of solving a problem for them or through just sort of ramping up the experience of what that pizza night could could be. You know. Yeah, the solving the problem is crucial. You're yeah. doing that in such fun ways. It's both creative and helpful. So I think that's a great balance. Um, last two questions. What is your pizza order? Uh, uh, Brooklyn crust. If you have not had Brooklyn crust at Domino's, you should you should try it. Um, and I think you know. I guess to the deliciousness question in general, there's a lot that we offer that people don't know about. And so I think we're going to work to to a bit, do a better job of that. It's like a thinner, more foldable crust. Um, it got the right balance of of toppings and and crust in my mind. Um, so probably straight cheese, Brooklyn crust would would be the way that I would go. Straight cheese. Yeah. Okay. And what innovation in the last couple of years have you been most proud of or excited about at Domino's? That's a good question. Um, there's so much. There's so much that we've done and so much that we've accomplished. I, you know, I, I would interestingly answer the Domino's Rewards program. I know that that's not, you know, the splashiest answer, but that's, you know, where we're giving the most value to the consumer and where we're giving the most value to the business at the same time. And, and I, I think that that um, is also setting the stage for everything that we're going to be doing for the to, to reinvent what value means at Domino's through personalization. Um, and so I would go with Domino's Rewards. I've had a few good you know, candidates with like with the self-driving delivery and, and, yeah. and um, a few other things. Um, but I'd go with the overhaul of the Domino's rewards. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you all for being here. Um, and I'm just going to really quickly put the link up here for the downloadable report if we can get this to work. But this might take a little while, so it might not be worth it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know if we're going to get that, but... <laughs> It's on our website too, so thanks everyone. Thank you. This clicker is the main flag this is. <laughs>